there! Thank you so much for clicking on my video today! Um, welcome to my channel if you're new, and welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Rabbit, and my pronouns are they, them, and I'm really excited about today's videos. This is take two, because I already filmed it one time, but I accidentally hit slow-mo instead of regular video, so the quality is terrible. So I'm trying again. I really hope it works. Um, today Lemon is joining me. She decided to sit on my clothes that I had laid out for this video, but she's precious and I love her so much. Um, so I have my little notes of these DIYs, a uh, really easy or at least cheap um, alternative and like goth and punk DIYs that you can do. Um, lots of these might be like well known in the alt community and I'm not trying to like <laughs> just regurgitate things but maybe if you're like new or you're new to DIY um, maybe someone could have some inspiration for them. So this is just my little attempt at doing my version of like a little DIY video. So um, let's get into the first thing that I'm just gonna get out of the way because it's really easy and everyone knows it but it's so good and it's like the goths did it in the 80s and I love to do it. It's the fishnet shirt. <laughs> so all you have to do is get a pair of fishnets. I tend to get mine at the dollar store around Halloween. They always have lots of different types and whatever. So you get a pair, you cut a hole in the crotch and you cut the feet off and then you just like stretch it over your head um, and put your arms through the leg holes and you can even poke your thumbs in some of the holes so they're like little sleeveless glove kind of things and you have like a little cool fishnet shirt that you can wear as like a layering piece under other like t-shirts or tank tops or dresses or whatever you want and I think it's such a good look and yeah so that's first one just get it out of the way because it's a good one. Second, this one I think is really cool and I don't think as many people do it as I think they, as, like I think it should be more popular because of how affordable and easy it is and it's iron-on transfer sheets. So I got this pack at uh, the thrift store, someone like probably got it and then didn't like it and left like all the sheets in it just at the thrift store and I found it for like two dollars but I think it's usually around like 10 maybe 15 dollars i'm in canada so that currency um but basically it's a really great thing because you can design um any picture you want or just take a picture that you like um print it out on a laser printer iron it with an iron or like a hair straightener if it's like a little thing and then it's on your clothes and it's the best thing ever so um, i'll just show a couple of examples of um designs that i've made and ironed onto pieces this one <laughs> features my cats who I love so so much. This is Tuna and this is Lemon and I made this before I identified as non-binary and it says girls bite back but it has three R's so I still wear it because like riot girl not biological girl um, and it's so freaking cute. It's also like a little crop top that I just cut like a regular t-shirt into a crop top and this one says be kind and also features my cats but I washed it in hot water so and not inside out which is how you should wash these and it got like all crinkly but this is lemon and this is tuna and i just love them so much i love to wear this one to work um i think yeah you have to be careful to wash it correctly but it's a really great thing iron on transfer sheets um this is a design that i made that i actually got printed professionally that you can also do if you don't want to um iron on yourself but it also has my cats and i figured i'd include it um, it's, it was for my boyfriend though. Um, but what I wanted to say is for designs, a really great resource to make your own designs that I use all the time. I used it to make all these designs and also to make all my YouTube thumbnails is Canva. It's free or like there's a free version of it. And basically you can put together pictures that you have and you can also use like free stickers and like kind of like little images from them and just make like super cute things they have like cute fonts and cute free images that you can like put in your design and i highly recommend that you maybe get a couple of these and give it a go if you don't have a laser jet printer um i know sometimes like libraries will have them or schools will have them i know right now we're in the pan that I'm not allowed to say that word but um for YouTube monetization stuff but maybe when it stops iron on patches for everyone I think it's so great okay next real quick this is a something basic but I figured I'd mention it um cutting up your clothes um this is for instance a SeaWorld t-shirt and I don't 
support SeaWorld or like it, but I found this at the thrift store and I like the orca on it. So I just covered up one of the SeaWorld patches and then cut it off at the part where it also had like SeaWorld designs or whatever. And I think crop tops are such a good look. Like you don't have to be a girl A to wear them and you don't have to be thin to wear them in my opinion. I think boys and non-binary people and men and fat people as well as thin people like literally anyone looks so good in a freaking crop top i think if you want to try it out and you're like scared just try it out it's so much fun and um crop tops for everyone i think it's a great look so yeah you can cut your shirt off make it into a crop top you can also cut off like the collar or cut slits up it or cut them up the ribs um i'll insert some pictures of different designs but like you can get super creative with it for instance this shirt. So this is a t-shirt that I, it was originally like a big men's t-shirt that I just found at the thrift store. And what I did was I cut out a triangle like under the collar, but I left the collar in. So it's kind of like a choker. Um, and I cut off the sleeves and then cut slits up the sides of the shirt and it just makes it like a cool little modification. So if you have like old shirts that you're like, ah, what do I do with this? Just rip them up. Even if you just put like random rips all over it and layer it over something else, I think that's a really good look. So rip up clothes is one of my favorite things. Then I wanna just mention a really fast one that's super easy and in my opinion looks really cool. Bleaching your clothes either haphazardly by just doing like splatters um, or actually like using a paintbrush and doing like really detailed designs. I've done both of those, but um, if you do detailed designs, definitely like mask up, wear gloves, be careful because bleach is not great to inhale. Um, but to make this, uh, basically, I just threw my flannel down in the shower and just splattered some household bleach on it, left it for like 15 minutes or so. You can see the color change, so you can just decide when it's done. And it went from blue to this cool like rusty orangey color that just looks very like post-apocalyptic kind of and grungy, and I really like it. I also did that on my big patch jacket, like that's the orange um, things but we'll talk about this later. Just know that um, bleach will m probably make things orange and like you can't really predict the color that it will be though, so. But I, in my opinion, it, it's always fun. Now I'm gonna move on to things that actually require sewing, um, but fear not, if you don't know how to sew, I will teach you. I have included a little tutorial at the end of this video where I just teach a really, really basic stitch that um, I promise you beginners can learn and it'll be like so easy and definitely like when you learn to sew you're just like oh my god this makes my life a million times easier like I can just modify clothes so much easier so I'll just do a little hand sew tutorial at the end with that being said let's get into modifications that require some sort of sewing um, experience I can't get look at this lady she's too cute you make filming so distracting How is one so precious? So the first thing that I want to talk about is sewing your own felt patches. For instance, this little back piece that I just put on like a purple silky thrifted shirt or these no face elbow patches that I made. So both of these patches, I just took some felt from the dollar store. You can usually get a sheet for about 50 cents to a dollar um, and traced an image that I wanted on a piece of paper and then transferred that to the felt and just sewed it on um, with some embroidery thread and then added some little details and designs and also like the little moon. Um, and like, it's not clean on the inside by any means. Um, so it was just like a really quick little little project, but it can be so fun and you can make like really just simple designs like elbow patches in my opinion are super cute. I think making like heart shaped elbow patches is precious, but you can even make like stars or skulls or little characters or whatever you want. So making felt patches is freaking awesome. Also embroidering your own patches is really cool. This is a jacket that belongs to my boyfriend, but I wear it way more than he does. But <laughs> when we first met, he wore it all the time. And I made him this patch and this patch 
to go on it. Um, and basically all I did, so this one is a bug, um, cause that's one of my nicknames for him. All I did was I found a picture of a bug, like an illustration that I liked online and I printed it out. Then I took an embroidery hoop, like, you know, the plastic ones, um, a piece of old t-shirt material, um, put the hoop and then the t-shirt material and then the piece of paper with the printed design and then close the hoop with the other piece of it you know like the sandwich and then i just traced with my needle and thread the design that was printed on the page and then ripped out the paper when i was done not like ripped it out but like gently removed it also like with tweezers and stuff and it's just like a super cute little patch um this one features a little cat with a third eye and same thing, found a picture of a cat with a third eye, printed it out, transferred the image, put it on the jacket. Super good. Another thing that I like to do is make patches by using the designs of one shirt or piece of clothing and transferring it to another shirt or piece of clothing. Um, so for instance, I had this t-shirt that said kale on it, but I never really wore it, but I really liked the design. So I put it on the back of this flannel and then put a little hand sewn patch on the front that was from Mokoyubi, I think. I'll have to link it below. Um, but you can just take patches from certain clothes and put them on other clothes. I did that with a hodgepodge of different patches on this one, but the big one on the back is from an old t-shirt. Um, but I also embroidered like a little leaf design myself on the pocket and then put a Makoyubi camping club patch on it. And at the bottom, there's a doily that I um, cut up that I found at the thrift store. Like, you know those lace doilies that, peop that like old fancy people use at tea time? It was just one of those that I cut up um, and then took pieces of like felt and pieces of an old dress and pieces of um, sheets and stuff, just different designs that I like that I had around my house in fabric scraps to make um, it just cool, like kind of this cool hodgepodgey flannel mesh thing. So putting patches of like old pieces of clothes and fabric onto new pieces of clothes and fabric is super fun, which is how I also made my patch skirt, my piratey punk skirt. <laughs> I love plaid. I think it's like a super great thing and I think that layering a bunch of plaid on itself is super awesome. So I had this really scratchy plaid flannel that I didn't like and these pajama pants that were too long that were plaid so I cut the bottom of the pajama pants and used those for a couple of these patches and then the big red ones are all, are all from the scratchy flannel that I didn't want to wear so I used it on the outside of pieces. Um, you can get creative and make like heart shapes or star shapes or whatever you want um, for your patches and also make a bunch of pockets. So like these have a bunch of pockets. Just like don't sew the, the top part shut, just like fold it over itself and you have a pocket. I also added a bunch of like random little like safety pins and this patch that my parents got me from Nepal and little pieces of keychain things that broke. Just like whatever you want, you can add on to like a cool punky plaid skirt and it looks so cool in my opinion. Um, I remember when I was like 13 and really into my goth phase, I found this blog called Antimony and Lace or something like that. I'll definitely link it below, but it had all these amazing um, sewing tutorials for stuff like rag skirts and cloaks and pirate shirts. And I remember making all those items and like, this reminds me of the rag skirts that I used to wear when I was like 13 and like trying to be goth. <laughs> um, so definitely check that out if you're into sewing and goth fashion and like the more kind of like romantic vampire-y kind of looks. This is another one, um, I already mentioned like the bleaching part of it, but I also sewed this t-shirt patch on it. I didn't know it was from The Hangover, I thought it was just like a funny man with a wolf and it says one man wolf pack. So I cut it out of a big shirt because the shirt had stains on it and then sewed it onto the back of this flannel. And I also attached these patches that are Sailor Moon that are winning love by daylight, fighting evil by moonlight. I can't for the life of me remember what store I ordered them from and I'll try my best to find it and link it um, because I love this artist. She makes such cute stuff. Um, and look at these freaking patches. So they're super cute and just putting like store-bought patches on flannels is great too if you have the funds to get store-bought ones. Or not necessarily on flannels, on pants, on anything. Um, 
so speaking of, this is a patch that I put, um, that was store-bought that I put on this big grandpa sweater that has my no-face patches. Um, and I also put this printed out patch that I made with an iron-on transfer sheet, and it says sucker and it has the Grim Reaper. Another patched item is this dress. Um, it's actually the dress that I used parts of to patch up this. Ta-da! because it was too long originally. And I just added all these random patches from my boyfriend's mom's quilting projects because she had all these little squares and all these kind of like earth tones with like floral patterns on them. And I thought they would look really good on this floral dress. Um, I also put this little mushroom patch on it. Another example, I'm sorry, if you're like bored of the, of the patch stuff, I'll like tell you when to skip to. Um, um, I'll show a couple other patches that I've purchased and put on stuff or that I've found and put on stuff like my plaid skirts because I think plaid skirts look so good with patches it just really gives them that extra like little alternative edge and you can also make patches into pockets if you don't like sew the top of it shut so this one for instance says girl power girl love like not your rival on it um with a little cartoon of like little 1950s gals <laughs> made it before I was non-binary when I was like 17 but it's like a cute little kind of beigey thrifted skirt and just put a printed patch on it and it's a pocket now, and it's awesome. Um, this is another little thrifted skirt that I put a You're Screwed patch on it that I found at Hot Topic. And this is another thrifted skirt that I, that I um, shortened because it was way too long for me. Um, and I put this cool braces patch on it um, that, honestly, it was from like another jacket that I thrifted that had all these random patches on it and I just bought the jacket so I could cut the patches out and this brace one was so cute so it also I think has a patch yeah it has a patch that says boss lady on it which is hilarious because <laughs> uh if you know me you know that that's not at all no that's like not my vibe so I thought it was funny um this is a little corset that I found at the thrift store it's originally from H&M um, and I basically just took more flannel and plaid sort of patches and put them kind of haphazardly around the shirt. I even put like a little heart in the center and attached a bunch of safety pins. Um, it's a super cute little corset and I love wearing it with like my piratey flannel skirt because it's like patchy plaid on patchy plaid. So. Yeah, just showing as like it could be per chance inspiration. I even just used a plaid ribbon at the bottom. So you're really not, um, you really shouldn't feel limited in the types of fabrics you can use. Like just look around your house and like, it's really easy lots of times to find like little cool pieces that you can like cut snits bits off of and like use in something else. Which I guess brings us to this guy. Um, this is my big old, my big, big boy. My jacket that I've had since I was I don't know, 15? Um, I, I used to be, okay, I go through these phases where I'm like really into one color and for a while that color was like this sort of olive green and I have a backpack that I still wear like all the time that was from that period that's the same olive green. Um, so lots of these pieces are very like sentimental to me and have been with me for so long. And this jacket has um, had different patches on it over the years and I stitched all the, um, the original stitching with just like colored embroidery thread um, to reinforce it because it was like falling apart at some points um, and then some of the patches on it are from my boyfriend's mom's quilting project um, some of them are from my parents from Nepal like these kind of really beautiful embroidered like machine embroidered patches uh, some of them are printed from the internet on iron-on transfer sheets and transferred. Um, some of them, like this one, is from Maiden Voyage Clothing. I love them. I love their brand. Not sponsored, not affiliated, but I ordered a bunch of stuff from them recently and I kind of want to do an unboxing of it. Let me know if that's something you want to see because they have all this really cri cool cryptozoology stuff. Either way, um, it has also just a bunch of pins that I've collected over the years. Most of these I just kind of put on for the visual clutter effect. Um, a lot of them are just kind of found at the thrift store ones like this random sunflower with like a hexagon in it or these ones that are like little 
dessert things. I don't know what they are, but I was like, okay, let's just add as many random pins as we can. Um, I also recently attached studs to it. So I recently got um, a bunch of packets of studs off studsandspikes.com, not sponsored, not affiliated or whatever. Um, but they're really easy to put in and they're so fun. And this was my first project that I tried putting them on. It was just on my old jacket. And it's really easy. All you have to do is like poke the hole through the fabric, put in the bottom of the screw and then screw in the pointy part. They're called tree spikes, um, this kind. Uh, so if you're looking for that, they're so awesome and you can literally put them on anything. I love it. Um, and also I used to be really into making my own back patches, um, by drawing on like old bed sheets, like linen cloth kind of things with Sharpies or fabric markers. Um, so this one is a phrase in Latin that's a, that means wisdom with wisdom and effort. And it has like a snake and roses and eyeballs and crystals and ferns. I just kind of made like a random design. But yeah, just making your own patches by drawing um, with a Sharpie or with a fabric marker on old sheets or on old fabric that you have laying around can be a great way to make patches. Um, just don't try to wash it too often, I would recommend, um, because it can definitely fade over time. But if it does, just go back over it with the, with a Sharpie, you know? Life cycle continues. And a quick thing that I want to mention, just a little hack for if you put pins or buttons or whatever you want to call these on your jackets or your backpacks and you don't want them to fall off. So what I would highly recommend is buying a pack of those little earring backings um, I got them at the dollar store, but I think you can also get them at craft stores like Michael's or online. And basically all you have to do is put your pin in like you normally would in the fabric and then put the earring backing in it as like a little stopper and then close the pin. That way, even if the pin is open, it can't actually escape from your clothing and fall off and be lost to the sands of time forever. So. Um, yeah, then I just wanted to mention really quick this other, like, hack. Um, I wasn't gonna mention it because I was like, oh, this is really simple, but maybe it could help you. I don't know, whatever. Basically, if you like to roll up your sleeves, but you don't like them rolling down, you can just put a couple stitches in them. Um, I used color thread on this one, um, so it's like a green t-shirt with a pink hands on it that I found at the thrift store, and I just rolled up the sleeves and just tossed a couple stitches and now they don't roll down anymore. So quick tip for modifying your clothes. <laughs> Not really alternative, but you know. The next two I'm really excited about. This is all about painting your clothes, um, which I think is really, really fun. So first I'm going to talk about my patch pants. I made almost all the patches on these by painting with acrylic paint on old denim that I just got from old jeans. All of them except for my extraterrestrial Maiden Voyage clothing patch and my music festival patch from a while ago, long time ago, 2013. Wow, okay. Um, but basically, all I used was just regular acrylic paint, took old denim, cut up squares of it. Um, for designs, I just thought of bands that I liked, looked up their logos, and tried to copy it as much as I could, either by tracing it with a chalk marker beforehand or just going in freehand, um, or just looking up designs that I thought were cool and being like, yeah, I'm gonna put a stay creepy flag. That sounds like a good idea. Um, or yeah, just different, like my trans rights activism patch or my pro-choice patch. Um, different like political ideologies, loud and proud baby. But basically, yeah, one thing I will, two things I will mention is that dental floss is an amazing alternative to sewing thread on patch pants because you can, because it's very strong and tacky and pretty satisfying to sew with. So if you have dental floss, use that in my opinion. Second thing, try to wear your pants while you're sewing them. Um, that way they don't stretch and accidentally rip the, the patches that you just sewed on once you put them on because that's happened to me before where I don't account for the fact that they will stretch out when you actually put them on. Um, they also will fade if you use acrylic paint and the way that I combat that is to just have like pants nights sometimes where I just go through my pants, uh, paint it where it's chipping off, uh, repair any tears that need to 
be repaired like if a patch is coming unstuck I try to fix that you can also use fabric paint um, if you are really worried about them chipping off and stuff um, I think that would probably work better uh, but if you just don't like wash them super often and when you do wash them you wash them inside out and in cold water then you will be good um, in terms of making them look kind of like rustic you can grate them with a cheese grater and rip them up or you can just wear them a lot and they'll just become rustic on their own that's what I did to mine um, a really quick thing that I'll mention is you can layer like regular nylon tights um, over each other I like to do this thing where I take two pairs rip them both up in different spots and then layer them and it looks like a cool spider web I learned it from this really cool goth youtuber that I will link or like mention her channel her name is escaping me right now but yeah spider web tights super cool and you can just get tights from the dollar store and rip them up and good to go then this this is so cool okay my boyfriend did this not me um he's the tattoo artist he's the he's really talented um but basically um he just used acrylic paint mixed with a fabric medium um to paint on this denim jacket i know he did a lot of layers and he said don't wash it very often wash it in cold water um and inside out when I asked him about like care instructions for this video um those were his tips but yeah you don't have to do like the really crunchy looking patches like this if you don't want to you can do like really gorgeous clean designs if that's your thing too I just wanted to mention it and also show off because he's so cool anyway sorry um the last thing I will talk about is not so much clothing as it is accessories. So, the first thing that I want to mention is I think everyone should invest in a little packet of these earring back things if you have your ears pierced because you can literally make anything into earrings. Like little rubber ducky toys from the like kid section of the dollar store, you can make those into earrings. Old keys that don't work anymore earrings S safety pins why not tiny locks that you can't find the key for they're earrings now same with this key that I don't know but it's so tiny and it's so cute now it's an earring or little decorative spoons that you find can be earrings um, basically my point is that found object jewelry is super cool and I highly recommend it I know that lots of like e-girls and e-boys and stuff are doing chain necklaces with locks on them. You can totally DIY that. Just get a chain from the craft store, the dollar store, the thrift store, and put a little lock on it. And look at that. You're good to go. The last thing that I feel like I mentioned in every fashion video, but it's a true staple of my style and personal, personal wearing of things, um, is getting little tags printed at the pet store of whatever you want like I have one that says riot girl um, you could write literally whatever you could write eat the rich on one like y you can just print whatever you want um, this one has my this one has my cat's names on it um, lemon and tuna and I just got it printed and it was under 10 bucks and it's just like an adorable little thing and it makes me think of them every time I wear it and I just love it and I love them and yeah, I think that's a really cool thing that you could make jewelry out of. Oh yeah, okay. Another thing that I will mention really quick is leg warmers. I love leg warmers. I think they're super cool. Um, you can make them yourself very easily. If you have an old sweater that you don't like anymore, just cut off the sleeves and now they're leg warmers. Or if you have leggings that don't fit you in the waist, cut them off at the thigh and they're leg warmers. That's what I did with this pair. I had these really cool leggings that I think were a little too big for me, um, but they had this really cool design on them. So I just turned them into leg warmers and now I wear them way more than I would have if, um, if they didn't fit me, you know? So yeah, I'm a big proponent of cutting up your clothes, patching up your clothes, just doing whatever you want to them, bleaching them, tearing them, it's fun. Hey guys, so I just wanted to demonstrate really quickly um, how to sew just a really easy stitch. Beginners can do this, it's very easy to learn. Um, I'm gonna be demonstrating this with just this little random scrap fabric I have and a piece of felt. Feel free to watch it if you would like to know how to 
So, um, so first I'm just gonna cut out a piece of my fabric. Hi! So we've got a square and we've got the piece that we're attaching it to. If you want the edges to be neat, all you have to do is fold them over and place them on your fabric. I'm gonna pin them in place to keep it extra neat. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. So now it's pinned in place and it won't move while we're trying to sew it. So we just grab a needle and some thread. I'm gonna use black thread just so you guys can see it really well. When I'm modifying my clothes, sometimes I, use, I like to use a really bright thread that alternates colors, but you can always try to find a thread that matches yours, um, your piece of clothing better. There we go, threaded our needle. Okay, so once you have your needle threaded, I always like to do a double piece of thread because it keeps it stronger. So you keep your two pieces like that and cut it. So you have your two pieces, tie that in a little knot. And then what you're gonna do is just take that and go in from the bottom and stab the needle up, pull it through, stab it in, poke through the thread again, stab it in, poke through the thread again. And you just do this the whole way around until your patch is sewn on. Then what I like to do is to go over it so it makes an X. That will make it extra secure and stay in place really well. Sometimes your patches will come off and you'll have to do little repairs, but it's just part of life. I'm just gonna do this line so you guys can see how I'm sewing. And you're gonna wanna keep um, pulling your thread through every time, but not too tightly, just tightly enough that there's no wrinklage, wrinklage, wrinkling. And now, since all of our X's are crossed, it's time to tie it off. Normally I would go around the whole way, but since this is just for a tutorial, I'm just gonna show you guys one side. If your thread ever gets caught, just use the needle to unstick it and then pull it back through. So once it's in, you remove the pin that was keeping it in that spot. Take your thread, go in to the back, flip your fabric over, do a couple of stitches over each other. I mean, looping it into the fabric over and over. And once you have like two or three stitches there, you're just gonna wanna pull, put your needle through the loop to tie it. And do it again. And there you have it. Cut your thread and there you go. That's how to sew a really simple patch or piece of fabric onto another piece of fabric. I hope that helped. If you ever wanna leave the top open, instead of sewing the fabric to the other fabric, just sew it to itself and you'll have a nice hem and you can use it as a little pocket. Um, I hope that was useful. And if you didn't know how to sew, that maybe you're more confident in trying your hand at it because it's really easy and I promise you, you can learn. And um, I hope this video, even if it was like really basic ideas, could be of help to you or of little inspiration to you. If you make anything that is like cool and DIY, I would love to see it. Please like tag me on Instagram or, or I don't think you can put in pictures here, but do that or describe it if you want. Um, tell me your DIY ideas if you have like cool ones that I didn't mention or tag DIY channels that you like. Um, yeah, I hope that that was good <laughs> and um i hope take two worked better than take one that was like terrible terrible quality um i know that the outfits i showed were pretty like boring and that wasn't i mean it was kind of on purpose because i was trying to show like the modified article and like draw attention to that and not like the other stuff i feel like i'm rambling now but i was really stressed out because i was like oh like all the b-roll footage i made like looks so bad so i'm nervous but all is well. Um, I hope you guys are having um, a swell time. I know that things are horrible for a lot of people right now. Um, and I just wanna send a really big virtual hug to anyone that's struggling. And I hope that you're taking care of yourself and being kind to yourself, cause you truly do deserve it. Um, I'm sending all my love and a big hug and I hope to see you in the next one.
Bye for now, you guys.